started something good. Yo 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 yo! Pastor Jay's here. How are you? Finally, the autumn is gradually deepening. This is what is going on in our churchyard. Fall color has begun, and persimmons are ripening. Try become a poet, or writer, or philosopher during this season. Life will become even more abundant and richer. Have you ever thought about a question like this? What is the best time to do things? Who is the most important person? What is the right thing to do? In John Muth, touching and beautifully illustrated adaptation of a story by the great Russian novelist Leo Tolstoy, Nikolai is a boy who sometimes felt uncertain about the right way to act. He tells his friends that he wanted to be good, but he doesn't always know how. He believes he will know what to do once he has answered to three questions. What is the best time to do things? Who is the most important person? What is the right things to do? His best friends are heron and monkey and a dog. They tried to assist him, still couldn't get the answers. Then Nikolai decided to visit Leo, the turtle who lives high in the mountains, has lived a long, long time. Finally, the boy finds him and helps him dig his garden in his request. During a storm, Nikolai rescues a panda, and then goes back out to find her baby. Both are saved, and Nikolai feels a great peace inside of him. So here we go. Leo the turtle reminds him that the best time is now. The most important person is whoever you are with, and the right things to do is what whoever is with you need. This graceful story has a deeply spiritual help to it that touches the heart. Asking the right questions, living in the present moment, and acting on behalf of others brings inner peace. Isn't it beautiful? If we were to think of today as the last day of our, our lives, what would our priorities be? We have learned last Sunday about serving. Today, we will explore Jesus' word that specifically explains how and what we should serve. Let's read today's scripture verse, Matthew chapter 25, verse 40. The king will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. What does that mean? Who are the least? What do we have to do? It's all in text. Look at Verse 35 and 36. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was stranger and you invite me in. I need a clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. That's right, serving the least. Who are the least of these? Those who couldn't eat and were hungry, and those who were thirsty and naked, and those who were imprisoned, those who were sick, and those who had nowhere to go and wandered like strangers. These are the people in reverse too. This is what today's believers in Jesus are most prone to get wrong. We think that praying a lot and worshiping diligently is all there is to it. We strive to live by the Word and the Holy Spirit which is very important, of course. But as important as worship and reading Bible, evangelism and missions are equally important as showing love to the least of these. Agree? Amen. Amen. We all know who is Mother Teresa. You know her? Yes, who dedicated her life to dying people in Calcutta, in India. Mother Teresa left us with this word. People are dying of hunger, not because of God has not taken care of them, but because you and I are not generous and giving enough. 
We fail to recognize Jesus coming to us in the distressing disguise of the poor, in the lonely person, in the child seeking warmth. We fail to recognize him once more. The one struggling with food insecurity is one of the least of these. Someone who is suffering mentally or physically is one of the least of these. A person feeling lonely is one of the least of these. The person right next to you, mom or dad, brother, sister, friends, could be one of the least of these. Encourage them. Look at him and look at her and say something. Say something to comfort. Say something about you love and you care about. That's the beginning of giving to the least of these. Jesus knows how you serve him in the least of these. Second, heartfelt service bears lots of fruit. During World War II, a young British soldier was struck by enemy gunfire and was dying. A chaplain placed his hands on the soldier's body, prayed and asked for his last word. The young soldier briefly said, tell my mom I died happy without suffering. Moments later, as if he remembered something crucial, the young soldier gasped for breath and urgently added, chaplain, one more thing. Please tell Miss Hunnings, my Sunday school teacher at the church I attended, tell her I haven't forgotten her teachings. Thank her for guiding me to peaceful closing of my eyes as a Christian. The chaplain followed the young soldier's last wishes and went to find the Sunday school teacher. She had been silent, shedding tears for a long time. Finally, she spoke with a heavy heart. I am no longer Sunday school teacher. I thought the role of Sunday school teacher wasn't significant and resigned. But hearing the dying word of my student, I have made up my mind. Starting next Sunday, I will volunteer as a Sunday school teacher again. That's right. Do your best in the opportunities for service you've been given. Service can take various forms, whatever material or time or talent, serve in any way you can. Let me wrap up today's sermon as I share one mom's story. Charlotte Kitley was diagnosed with a stage 4 bowel cancer in 2012. She faced two operations to remove tumors from her bowel and liver, 25 rounds of radiation treatment and 39 chemotherapies. However, she passed away on September 16, 2014 at age 36. The blog she wrote about her battle with cancer until the moment that she took her last breath was made public, bringing tears to millions of people. Here is the story. And so there must come an end. You have literally no idea how blessed you are to shout of them, your children, in the morning to hurry up and clean their teeth. I have tried every treatment offered from the standard medical therapies to eating oiled cottage cheese, having acupuncture and juicing kale. Cancer has become our life. My husband will get two cups from the cupboard, but realize there's only one coffee to make. Lucy, my daughter, will need someone to reach for her hairband box, but there won't be any more to plait her hair. Danny, my son, will have lost one of his Lego policemen, but no one will know exactly which one it is, where to look. I received a terminal diagnosis with only six months to live, but I will live for 22 months. Thanks to that extra year, I was able to experience the joy of taking my son to school on his first day of elementary school. I was incredibly happy when my son's first wobbly tooth fell out and we went out to buy a bicycle to celebrate. Thanks to that bonus year, I am living not just into my mid-30s, but late-30s. Middle-aged belly fat, an expanding waistline, I wish I could experience that just once. 
thinning hair. I wish I could pluck out a few strands just to have that opportunity. It's a testament to surviving after all. I wanted to grow old ones too. Embrace your loved one. And if they cannot embrace you back, find someone who will. Everyone deserves to love and be loved in return. Don't settle for less. Please enjoy life. Hold on to life with both hands. And good night, goodbye, and God bless. Each time I read this article, it's really breaking my heart. Charlotte's story emphasized the living and serving as if each day were your last at building the people around you and serving others. What is the best time to do things? Now. Who is the most important person? The person next to you. What is the right things to do? Serving. One another. Live and serve as if it were the last day of your life. Then your life will be better. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your blessing. We have thousands, thousands of days of life and times, and we are not really grateful. We are not really thankful for what we have. Once again, we realize that it is very important to be with someone whom we love. And it's very important to share what we have. Father, let us not complain. Let us not uh, blame anything. Father, use us as a tool so we can share your love and your care and your blessing to, with one another. Use us as a tool. Now I'm asking your abundant blessing in the name of the Father and Son and Holy Spirit to every one of us here, as well as our family, our churches, and our countries, all the medical staff taking care of the patients, all the missionaries and ministers spreading your word throughout the world, all the American soldiers fighting for peace and freedom throughout the countries, bring them home safely. Amen.